On May 23rd, 2020, Hannah Kimura posted a picture of her and her cat on Instagram. The caption was, I love you. Please live long and happy. I'm sorry. After this post, Hannah took her own at only 22 years old. She'd been struggling with online hate for months. At the time of her tragic death, Hannah was one of the house residents of the Japanese reality show Terrace House, Tokyo 2019-2020. She was also a professional wrestler and a sweet, optimistic girl. Hannah's passing stopped the production of the show and it also made a lot of people wonder, how come Hannah was struggling publicly in front of such a huge audience and no one did anything to prevent her death? The truth is that Hannah's passing involves more than online hate and negligence. It's also the result of the show's irresponsibility towards its participants. Today, I'll tell you how a Netflix show killed Hannah Kimura. Trigger warning. This video contains mention of self- before starting with the story of Hannah, there's some things that you should know about Terrace House. It started in 2012, and ever since then, it has tried to be different to other reality shows. On Terrace House, the six residents are allowed to leave the house, go to work, and meet friends and family. They're not locked in with each other as in most reality shows. Apart from that, the show has been very insistent on the fact that it's unscripted. It claims to show real life, mundane conversations, everyday activities, and real people having real interactions with each other. However, there's some really dark things about the show that people only started noticing after Hannah's death. First of all, the incredibly strict contract that the producers made all of the cast members sign. Terrace House paid its participants the equivalent to 1,000 US dollars per month. But if they were filmed going out with friends, they had to pay that from their own pockets. Apart from that, they had strict guidelines about participating in interviews, films, or disclosing their personal information. One very concerning part of the contract says, I pledge to follow all the instructions and decisions of your company regarding the schedule and shooting policy, including directing and editing during the recording period of this program. Therefore, the members could not decide when to leave the show. It was up to the producers. Finally, if the house residents broke the contract, they will be charged a compensation fee ranging from 10000 to $100,000 to cover the production costs. This means that even if the show claimed to be unscripted, members of Terrace House were forced to do basically whatever they were instructed to do. And in fact, it was this element of Terrace House that started the chain of events that ultimately killed Hannah. <laughs> Hannah joined Terrace House with the hopes of sharing her passion for wrestling with more people. When she was there, she quickly started getting along with some of the members, particularly aspiring stand-up comedian Kai Kobayashi. Soon, a romance started blossoming between them. Kai and Hannah had some successful dates until a double date trip, where Hannah started thinking that Kai might not be the right match for her. Then came the episode that ruined everything. It was called Case of the Costume Incident, and it aired on March 31st on Netflix. In that episode, Kai accidentally puts one of Hannah's wrestling costumes inside the dry which caused it to shrink. The costume had a sentimental value for Hannah, and it was also very expensive. Hannah got very angry, and she started saying stuff to Kai in front of the other members of the house. It looked like the underlying problem of the situation was that since their trip together, Hannah thought that Kai was selfish and didn't think about others. Hannah then started getting very impatient with Kai, who was not saying anything else apart from, I'm sorry. The situation stopped when Hannah stood up, approached Kai, and slapped his hat off his head. After this episode aired, the hate started. Everyone was calling out Hannah for overreacting and throwing a tantrum, but the things some people said to her were disproportionate and extremely cruel. Some people on the internet have translated hate comments that Hannah got, and they said things like, you are the most disgusting thing that has ever appeared on Terrace House. No, on television. Or, if you were gone, everyone would be so happy. I'm serious, just disappear. While some people stood up for Hannah, many others were surprisingly defending the bullies, arguing that if Hannah couldn't take people tearing her down, she shouldn't be on TV. Hannah was getting crazy criticism for having lost her temper, but she also got many hurtful comments about her heritage. Hannah's father was Indonesian, and people discriminated against her because she was mixed race. In addition to that, Hannah's mother said that Hannah wasn't good at conforming to the image of a typical Japanese girl, which had brought her problems since she was a child. After the episode aired, the online hate went on for two months. Hannah was devastated. Even more so because, as her mom would soon learn, she actually was forced to act aggressively in that discussion she had with Kai. A few days before her death, on May 15th, Hannah spent her grandmother's birthday with her and her mom, Kyoko Kimura. After the celebration, Hannah broke down into tears and confessed to her mom that the production of the show was forcing her to behave a certain way in front of the camera to get more views. Hannah also told her mother that she wanted to behave professionally, but that the producers had forced her to act aggressively towards Kai. According to Hannah, the case of the costume incident episode had been staged, and that the staff would say things to Hannah like, nice, now slap his face. The instructions that Hannah got from the production of Terrace 
house were to play up her wrestling persona to be more violent. Hannah refused to slap Kai, and the least she could get away with was slapping the hat off his head. So the incident that triggered all the backlash was not even provoked by Hannah, but by producers that forced her to behave that way. On May 18th, things got worse for Hannah because regardless of how damaging the situation was for her, the case of the costume incident episode aired again, now on Fuji TV. Hannah even sent a message to the Terrace House staff members that said she wanted to die. But this was not even enough for them to stop broadcasting the episode, so the hate kept coming. Only a few days after, Hannah tweeted, I have received nearly 100 honest opinions every day, and I cannot deny that I got hurt. Things had just become too hard for her to handle. On May 23rd, Hannah sent her mom a message that said, I'm sorry, mama. I can't take it anymore. It got too painful. Mama, live happily, okay? Hannah's mother quickly tried to get in touch with her, but she was unable to. She immediately called an ambulance for Hannah, and she headed there by taxi. There, they found a note that said, I'm sorry for inconveniencing everyone. Thank you. Everyone, live a happy life, okay? After Hannah died, the police found nearly 1,200 hate posts directed to Hannah, coming from 600 accounts. <laughs> Stardom Joshi Pro Wrestling used their Twitter account to report Hannah's passing. People were heartbroken and shared their sadness. Hannah was so beautiful inside and out. I'm sending all my love to her family and all her friends and co-workers. Many others were condemning all the hate she had gotten online for the last couple of months. This is wrong. She was just 22. Things need to change. Social media companies need to give the information to the police when things like this happen. She deserves justice. Hannah was clearly very, very loved. But the inexcusable hate she got was louder than the support. Thanks to Hannah's mom and the support of her fans, the Metropolitan Police started investigating the online hate in her case. It came from an overwhelming amount of accounts, which started deleting their comments as soon as Hannah passed away. The police found the particular account of one man that sent Hannah tweets like, you are a terrible person, why are you even alive? And when will you die already? The police filed charges against him and he apologized to Hannah's family through email in June 2020. In July, a government website in Japan was also created for people to file requests to take down posts that contained unwanted comments. The press tried to contact the president of Fuji TV and the co-producer of the show to get a statement on Hannah's death. He denied all the allegations and asked for the names of the people who had given testimonies against the show. After Hannah's passing, Terrace House was canceled and its fans don't seem to believe that it will ever come back. The cancellation of the show also prompted many reflections on how to prevent a situation like this from happening again, how to help people who suffer from it, and also how to shape an industry of entertainment that protects the celebrities and the audience. What most people agree on is that the mental health of everyone who participates in a show must be put before its entertainment value. Hannah's situation is heartbreaking for many reasons. First of all, because Terrace House used her as a tool to get higher ratings without any consideration for what she wanted or how this would affect her. But sadly, this lack of consideration is not surprising in the entertainment industry. The most shocking part is that the anonymity of the internet makes people feel entitled to be mean to others because they're behind a screen. Also, the internet and television can make it hard to tell the difference between fiction and reality, which creates a very dangerous delusion. Sometimes people seem to forget that people they send hate to are real human beings with real emotions and that words can hurt them deeply. So if there is one lesson to learn from this tragedy, it's that words can kill and that we should never ignore the warning signs of people who might be struggling with online hate. What are your thoughts on how this whole situation was handled? Let me know your comments down below.